Mr. Cain, I think it's a, a good way to conclude in relation to the, the meeting this morning. I think, look, it's very clear from the, the meeting this morning that the rural social scheme is not an activation scheme and therefore shouldn't have a, a time limit in relation to it. And I think, you know, the reality is, and we've had evidence here this morning, uh, that many of the participants on the scheme are working in excess of the 19 and a half uh, hours because for them there is the self-worth in relation to that work but also the impact in the local community because the participants see firsthand the impact it is having uh, on a community, in the community and I think participants should receive the full rate uh, of payment irrespective of means and I think that the current rate of payment at one euro and 28 cent per hour uh, is not equitable and it is not uh, justifiable and I think this issue needs to be uh, urgently re revisited. Um, I think Mr Broderick and Deputy Canny raise an important issue in relation to someone inheriting a house and this is a, a problem right across uh, our social welfare system and we have the perverse system in this country at the moment where uh, we have a housing emergency uh, in every single community across this country today. And yet, if anyone were to release that house or to rent that house out at the moment, they're actually penalised in relation to the social welfare uh, system, uh, which makes absolutely no sense at the moment where we have the Department of Social Welfare actively blocking the release of properties for rental in the middle of a housing uh, crisis. I think in relation to the the TUS, I think the 12 month limited needs to uh, the 12 month limit on participation uh, needs to be urgently revisited particularly in many parts of the country where there isn't anyone uh, willing to take up that position when it becomes uh, available uh, anyway uh, and the the 3 year uh, prohibition on going back on the scheme uh, needs to be uh, looked at as well uh, as is the issue of, of the referrals and we've seen this uh, firsthand uh, in our own part of the country where you're straddling different counties, when you're straddling, straddling different social welfare regions uh, where the referrals are, are not coming through and there seems to be a lack uh, of joined up uh, thinking there in relation to that. Just finally, I think the issue in relation to the treatment of supervisors, uh, whether they be CE, uh, TUS or RSS, uh, needs to be urgently uh, reviewed because they are the linchpin in terms of the success uh, of the scheme and the engagement of individuals within communities uh, right across the country. And I think, you know, the evidence from uh, Ms Brennan here this morning, specifically highlighting the issue of paid uh, maternity leave, highlights the discrimination that's there in relation to it. Here we have a scheme that's been publicly funded, uh, where we're engaging with people who sadly are on the margins of society, trying to bring them back into the mainstream of society, whether it be in terms of their own social engagement, their own self-worth, the impact it's having in the local community. And we're not even prepared to provide the supervisors with maternity leave. And I think, you know, we've heard a lot in terms of issues of access and discrimination, uh, in terms of participation of women in the workforce. I think this is very low hanging fruit that needs to be uh, urgently addressed. So I'd like to thank witnesses for attending here today and for your constructive and very positive engagement uh, with the committee. It's our intention as a committee to present a report on our deliberations to Minister Humphreys uh, with the hope that the committee's deliberations and recommendations will be taken on board uh, by the department. The Joint Committee uh, will now proceed in private session and remain so adjourned. Uh, so we allow the witnesses time to leave.